Hey everyone, welcome back to Diabetic Savvy. Today we are launching a very special mini-series of videos that focus on specific recipe adaptations that build our immune system. One of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is how do you snack? What do you snack on? You, you can't have cookies, you can't have popcorn, you can't have all those traditional snacks that we like. I'm going to give you a great recipe today using chickpeas, so stay with us. The Bengal Graham, the Chol, the garbanzo bean, the chickpea, the Egyptian pea, it doesn't matter what you call it, but one thing is for certain, this little powerhouse of nutrition contains as much as 50% of the daily requirement of fiber and 25% of the daily requirement of zinc. We're gonna be making roasted chickpeas three different ways today. One, using lemon pepper, garlic, and a touch of salt. Two, a Middle Eastern inspired, smoky, zatar flavored roasted chickpea. And lastly, we're gonna be making a really simple trail mix version using cinnamon, clove, dried cranberries, and some cashews. So let's first talk about our garbanzo beans or chickpeas. I may call them different things during the video, so please forgive me, they are the same thing. This is one standard 15 ounce can of garbanzo beans or chickpeas. The most important thing that you have to do first is drain them. You also want to dry them completely. Now, a couple recommendations for drying them so that they roast off properly. What I recommend doing is getting a sheet pan with a kitchen towel underneath and then a lint-free kitchen towel on top of that so that we can take our drained chickpeas and roll them not only to get off any loose skins but also dry that surface area completely. Now you might be thinking, why is he spending so much time talking about drying the garbanzo beans? If you take this step for granted, you won't have those really nice, crispy, crunchy, roasted, popcorn-like chickpeas that we're all looking for. So again, I just like to roll the garbanzo beans around, and then pulling the towel back, I wanna just look for any loose skins. Each of our recipes today are measured to one can of garbanzo beans, or roughly one and a half cups by measure. One last thing, you wanna make sure that you just continuously check for loose skins on the garbanzo beans, because eating roasted chickpea skins is kinda of like eating the skin off of a popcorn kernel. Blah. Second thing is, they could contain a little bit of moisture that you don't want on that final product. Now with our chickpeas completely dry, we can add our flavorings. We're gonna be using a little bit of olive oil, and then for our first of three different recipes today, we have one half teaspoon of salt-free lemon pepper, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and a pinch of table salt. Sprinkle them over our chickpeas and stir. Now, with a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, you can lay them out in a single layer and roast them off at 375. You can go as high as 400. I like using 375 because it doesn't color the chickpeas as fast and ensures they dry out completely. And while our first batch is roasting off in the oven, we're gonna get our second variation ready to go, our smoky Middle Eastern inspired Zatar seasoned roasted chickpea. For this recipe, we're using three basic ingredients, salt, smoked powder, which is a naturally derived smoke powder. And lastly, za'atar. Za'atar is a seasoning mix made up of thyme, you can also use a little bit of oregano, cumin, coriander, sumac, and toasted sesame seeds. It's been just about 50 minutes, just to make sure that we really dried out these chickpeas. And if you listen, they have that really dry sound to them. Hmm, I don't know if you can hear that, but they really have a crunch to them. We're gonna go ahead and let these cool and we'll get our second batch in. And while our second batch is in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and finish up our last version. This is a sweet version. So we're gonna be making this like a trail mix, except instead of using peanuts and those kind of things, we're using roasted chickpeas. Ingredients for this are really simple. One tablespoon of Truvia, that is our erythritol stevia blend that we've talked about in other videos. A quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of clove. We're also gonna add just a pinch of salt to this and we'll get ready to roast that off. And lastly, we're gonna be using a vegetable oil in this particular case because we don't want the olive oil to flavor any of the sweet profile that we're trying to create. Now our 
roasting process for this recipe is also going to be a little bit different. We've been running about 45 to 50 minutes for each of the previous two recipes. This one, we're going to do a hard stop of roasting the chickpeas at 45 minutes. Then we're going to add our cashews to that, roast them for another five minutes so the cashews also get a little bit of color and a little bit of sweetness as well. Then we'll mix the cooled nut and chickpea mixture together with our dried cranberries and give it a taste. We have finished off all three versions of our roasted chickpeas today. Our first recipe was garlic, lemon, and a little bit of salt. Certainly has that popcorn-like texture that we're looking for. And the way the flavors will hit you will be garlic followed by a little bit of lemon. Really good, really bright. Let's move on to our zatar blend. Mmm, really good. This one hits you in a couple of different ways. Really earthy, nice flavors, very, very different from the lemon and garlic, but absolutely fantastic. That would be one that you'd want to try. And lastly, the one that we haven't really talked about would, is our trail mix version. Really good. A couple of things here. The first initial taste that you get is a lot of the toasted flavor between the chickpeas and the cashews. Then you get the cinnamon flavor followed by a touch of the clove, and then it's rounded out by the sweetness of the dried cranberries. A couple of things about cashews that I also wanted to remind you about because we're talking about immune system building foods. We chose cashews for a very specific reason. There's a variety of health benefits that cashews provide, including it reduces heart disease, it helps prevent blood disease, it provides a massive amount of your daily recommended amount of dietary fiber, and it's also good for your skin and your hair. So there you have it, a great alternative to popcorn an American snack, one that is healthy, diabetic friendly, and has an amazing array of health benefits, regardless of which recipe you choose or ones you make on your own. As promised at the beginning of the video, we are gonna be producing a series of immune boosting recipes that are adapted to be diabetic friendly. We hope you'll subscribe. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified of when we upload new content to the channel. We wanna thank our new subscribers, the growth of the channel, the growth of our communities, and the comments that you're leaving are incredibly important to us. Thank you so much for being part of the community and we'll see you again in a few days with another video. In the meantime, be carb deliberate, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.